but I want us to be able to look beyond the crisis of violence and abuse and stay focused on what rewards you for being able to tolerate this violence, tolerate this, the ways in which it saturates so many parts of our society and our family and our relationships and our institutions. And for many of you who are Christians, to be able to have a sense of this violence as kind of inevitable sinfulness, an inevitable part of sinfulness, what feeds that sense of tolerance? It's wrong, but isn't it kind of an inevitable part of who we are as sinful human beings? Now remember, I hasten to add that I'm not opposed to crisis shelters and crisis hotlines and sexual harassment policies and clergy sexual abuse policies and sexual misconduct uh, uh, procedures and consequences and uh, for those who perpetrate and protect perpetrators. But I think in order to end the violence, we must seek to recognize what fuels it, the deliberate cultural choices that are made in what I want to say is a zealous, worshipful combination, almost a spiritualized kind of belief in the combination of male aggression, a natural right to assert dominance as aggressively as possible. Like we are so, like watch the, the Hollywood industry understands how much we are so love male aggression as aggressive as possible to, to affect that dominance, combined with dynamics of sexuality, where sexuality is used as a weapon to assert domination, literally turning one's body into a weapon, used to threaten, used to taunt, used to intimidate, used to harass, combined with an entitlement to go after the other, to, to make into uh, one's the one's uh, members of one's community, of one's family, of one's workplace, and other. It is a kind of spiritual enculturation that requires a spiritual reimagining to shift it. 